The overwhelming majority of economists are predicting stagflation is ahead. Now, that's one of the most dangerous economic terms out there. Is it ahead? What is it? And how can you prepare? I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. There's three geeky economic terms, and no, actually there's you know an infinite number, but three that are sort of connected with inflation, this time period that we're going through. And, uh, and it's important that you understand these, okay? And so number one is inflation. And, and we, we know what that is, and that's the general rise of prices over time. It's, the, it's sort of the general increase of prices over time. And you could also say, well, you could say it differently. It's the same thing, but the general kind of reduction of your purchasing power of your dollars, right? That a dollar won't go as far, you know, at 10 years from now as it does today. It doesn't go as far today as it did you know, 10 years ago or two years ago, right? So inflation is the general rise of prices over time. And we are in an in inflationary society. This is sort of how, it's, how it needs to work. Otherwise, would you ever buy a house? Would you invest in the stock market? Would you, um, it's a, like, would your wages ever grow over time if we weren't in an inflationary society? And so it's sort of the, the default status of the current economy. What we need to look out for is hyperinflation, what we're seeing right now. And some politicians say this is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. I, you know, I would, we would disagree. It's very clearly connected to money printing and monetary policy and how much money is actually printed. So it is absolutely zero surprise, zero shock that we are seeing hyperinflation and elevated levels of inflation because we printed so much money as Federal Reserve printed so much money in 2020 and 2021. And so that's starting to shrink. We're actually seeing the M2 money supply decline for the first time in a long time. Um, and of course, that's creating some jitters on the stock market. But, 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 but inflation is a general rise in prices. We need to avoid hyperinflation that's connected to money printing. So that's one, you know that one. Deflation might sound great. That's the, that's the drop in prices. And technology is deflationary. Technology is deflationary. And so how do we, how do we have both? How do we have an inflationary, like overall inflationary um, you know, economy that at really modest levels is, is a good thing, but also um, deal with the ever improving of our kind of standard of living and way of living via technology, things are getting better and things are getting cheaper and things are getting more streamlined and things are getting more efficient and more productive and those sorts of things. All those benefits that come with technology because technology is deflationary. You might think, oh, I want deflation. Well, typically, if you know it's, if it's pervasive, that means a drop in wages, a and and ends up meaning companies go out of business because they've got to drop prices, and yet their expenses stay high. And and it it, it can if it's pervasive, it's an enormous problem. Okay, um, but obviously in pockets and at times, it's going to feel good as a consumer. So there's inflation, there's deflation. And then there's stagflation. And guys, if, you, if you're as geeky as me, that, that's the dirtiest word. Like that's, that's the thing that you, that you really want to avoid. Of the three, stagflation is the least desirable. There is nothing good about it. Okay, so what is, what is stagflation? Stagflation is this economic phenomenon where we still have high levels of inflation, and I don't mean just normal inflation, still elevated levels of inflation, but we have slow to no economic growth. And the third, the trifecta, high unemployment. People are losing their jobs because the economy isn't great. And yet, because, despite all of that, prices aren't falling. Prices are continuing to go up faster than before. If you actually look, and, and guys, I, I didn't spend all the time to go through it, but I did, I did a, uh, a video oh, about a year ago, a while ago on stagflation because it sort of seemed clear that that was likely where we were gonna go here after this inflationary time. And, um, and at the time, the, I think it was Investopedia or some of the articles that I, that I saw 
on just trying to put up some data points for, for, for you, um, said basically stagflation, we haven't really seen it since the 70s and 80s when economic, when monetary policy was so loose, it was, um, it, they were printing so much money and they saw the, the, the negative ramifications and how stagflation was created and we won't ever do that again. And I was reading that at a time when we had just done that exact same thing where these authors had said they'll, you know, they learn their lesson. We'll never see that again. And yet we were doing all of those same things again. And so now when I look at what I think was the exact same article source, they've updated all of that and they've actually changed the definition of stagflation there. And they're actually saying we see stagflation all the time because in prices are, prices are always going up. So there's always some inflation and it, basically, they're, they're defining stagflation as, well, it happens anytime the economy slows down. Because when the economy slows down, unemployment goes up, and we, we're still seeing and prices go up, so that's stagflation. That's not stagflation. That is not like that. Yes, that's called, you know, an e economic cycle, right? Where, where the economy is booming and then it slows down. And when it slows down, of course, that is coupled with high unemployment. Um, but prices, depending on where you are, tend to continue to go up slowly. And so, yeah, the, an economic slowdown or recession it, it is stagflation. That's not, it's not, they've changed the definition. Stagflation is higher than normal inflation, elevated inflation. So prices are still rising rapidly beyond what would be a normal kind of average and the economy's in the slumps and you're losing your job. Okay. This is a very unique time period that we haven't seen since the seventies, early eighties. We haven't seen since the last time we had, uh, we, we had this much monetary intervention and, uh, and this much inflation. All right. So now we know our vocabulary and yet here we stand. The majority of economists are projecting a recession next year, and which makes me, as a contrarian, wonder, well, then I'm probably not going to see it, right? The stock market at all times works to prove as many people wrong as possible. So if so many people are predicting a recession, we'll probably be able to avoid one. I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll see. But predominantly, the expectation is inflation is going to stay at elevated levels. Yes, we've hopefully seen the peak, but we're probably still a long way from it going down to the t average of 2%. It's going to remain elevated or above average for a while. And yet prices continue, if they continue to grow and we see the economy starting to slow down, and that's coupled with, well, we, these companies need to make cuts because we, you know, and, and unemployment rises, that's stagflation. This is the most likely scenario of where we go from here. Economists then, if they're not projecting stagflation, they're, they're projecting deflationary recession, meaning instead of prices going up, um, generally, they're actually going to drop significantly, and that's going to push us into recession. Businesses will close, uh, unemployment will rise significantly, and, and so that's, if you're not thinking stagflation, you're thinking deflationary recession. That's, that's what uh, many economists are projecting. One of those two scenarios is by far the, the, the kind of the prevailing uh, hypothesis about where we're headed. If if inflation is connected to monetary policy, or excuse me, hyperinflation is connected to monetary policy, they're, they're starting to remove assets that they've printed, trying to pull them out of the economy. I don't believe they're gonna be able to do that very quickly or very long. Therefore, I do think we're still gonna be seeing inflation be above average for a while. And if the economy is slowing because the Fed needs to try and slow things down to try to contain inflation, I do think it, it seems very clear, which again, contrarian could mean, well, that just, well, it won't happen, but that we are on the way towards stagflation. If that's the case then, what do you do about it? Well, number one, you've got to prepare for market volatility. The stock market's not going to like it because inflation is high. That's going to keep interest rates high and the economy will suffer and the economy will have slow growth. And so, so the market will be extremely volatile. So make sure that you're not taking too much risk, that the amount of risk that you are taking is connected to what you need to take via your financial plan, that you've got the right investment strategies and that you're using multiple investment strategies. So you've got more diversification than just, well, I've spread out the risk. Okay. So, so first and foremost, prepare for market volatility, continued market volatility, and make sure 
sure that you've got the right, you've got a prudent investment approach from risk standpoint and strategy standpoint. If not, contact your certified financial planner or of course our team, we are, we're happy to help. But then the second way to prepare for stagflation is to get your financial house in order, okay? And, and so what, what that means is prepare for a rough economy, prepare for potential job loss and income uh, reduction. And yes, in the face of inflation. And so this is wildly unpopular, but if we do think stagflation is a possible and likely outcome, you're gonna protect yourself and manage volatility, but then you're also going to get it, make sure that your financial, your present financial position is in good shape. And that is a three bank account system that you've got the right cash flow system. You've got a monthly budget, you're, you're planning and saving up for future known expenses, and you've got a fully funded emergency fund and that you're being responsible with paying down debt and not taking on too much debt, coupling those two together, okay? You know, stagflation is painful. And the way that you can prepare, no one knows the future. And yes, you know, majority of people are projecting this, uh, this will be the case, but you know, it may, it may not. But if so, if so, how can you make sure that you've got the right investment mix to manage volatility? And by the way, I didn't mention, it's also part of that is also making sure that you can continue to contribute because market volatility means you should be able to buy more shares at lower prices during pockets of times like we saw during 2022. Um, so prepare for market volatility and make sure that you've got a stable present financial position. Your CFP can help with that. Those are two those are two of the six areas of your financial life, present financial position, investment planning. But you've also got to take a look at your protection plan, your tax plan, your retirement plan, your estate plan to make sure your entire financial life is working in sync and in synergy. Your CFP will help with that. If you don't have a CFP that's helping you with those things on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K. Wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.